Welcome to a day in the life of a risk consultant working at a big four audit firm in Sydney. I would wake up at about 5am for a 5.20 gym class. I check my work phone quickly to see if anything new has come up for work. I choose to work out in the morning as this is when I can guarantee some exercise for my body as I'm not sure when work will finish that day. After my workout, I'm usually back home at about 6.20. I quickly get myself ready for work. I shower, I pack my lunch and I make my breakfast before I head out the door by 7.20 a.m. to catch the train to work. It takes me about an hour and a half to get to work from door to door. This is when I try and finish up some YouTube editing as I like to take my personal laptop with me as well, as well as my work laptop and edit on the train ride there and back. Once I reach work at about 9 a.m., I catch up with my colleagues and I set my desk up to start working by 9.15 a.m. promptly. Now by 9.15 to 10 a.m., I make sure I check my calendar in case anything new has popped up. I create my to-do list on Outlook. I love doing this as it gives me so much clarity. Once that's done, I check my emails and only action the urgent ones before I get started with work. I also make it a point to check the news if I haven't already done so on my train ride into the city. I think it's really good, especially if you are working within a finance role, to be up to date on these kinds of things, just so that you are well informed about anything that happens, if there's any external factors that could potentially affect your work, I think it's a great idea to be one step ahead of it. Being a risk consultant is quite dynamic, so it's really important to stay on top of your schedule and stay organized as well because you don't want things to fall apart. Before I explain what I get up to in my day, I quickly wanted to talk about what a risk consultant actually is and what is it that they do. Risk management, risk consulting, internal audit are all terms which I personally believe can be used interchangeably. Risk consulting or risk consultants rather assess the operating processes of a business. So these are like systems, processes and people. We as risk consultants look at why businesses operate the way they do. We can pick any process of the business, try and understand it as fully as we can and identify any control weaknesses or any control gaps that are apparent. If there's a control gap or a control weakness, then there has to be something done about this because then this could be high risk for the business. As part of a risk consultant's day-to-day -day work, it usually involves looking through documentation, specifically process documentation, to get a good understanding of what the process is entailing and what it looks like. Understanding the business processes can also involve walkthroughs where we sit with the client or a process manager to understand the full process process to understand the steps involved to mitigate a risk. And from this process, we try and identify what improvements can be made, recommendations, and this is all mapped out in a risk control matrix. This is something that we prepare with all of our findings, all of our information that we've collated over the past few weeks of doing this assessment. And our final deliverable is presented to the client in the form of a report. Another aspect of a risk consultant, you may have heard this, is called sample testing. Now, this is where you would obtain evidence physical evidence or online evidence of practices that have been carried out, you would go out and test a few samples to test and see if what the client is actually saying is true. This is considered to be operating effectiveness. As you can tell, it's a very fast paced environment. There's lots happening, so it's very important for you to stay alert and on top of things. Now at about 10 a.m. on a Monday, we usually have our morning team huddle. This is with the wider team. So we've got different divisions sitting in on this meeting and essentially, we we have the partners or the heads of these divisions talk about new business ideas, new business ventures, team structures if they're changing, and any pressing work for the week ahead or the month ahead that we should be notified of. We get updates from heads of financial services, which is a team that I was a part of. We get updates from the corporate team, human rights team, and the government team, which all sit under risk assurance. At 10.30 a.m., let's say you're starting a new project, you would sit with your entire team. So this could involve the partner in some circumstances. It could involve the director, associate director, manager, 
senior consultant, the consultant and the graduate all in one room to talk about what the next project of work looks like. Usually an audit will last about two to three weeks depending on how intense it is. However, this can vary from division to division and country to country. In this meeting, the director will talk about the scope of work that is to be conducted. We talk about deadlines, the deliverables required by the client. Then managers and senior consultants will trickle that information down to consultants and graduates to get the task done. So actual work could include creating the work paper creating the scope document, creating the audit program, sending out the document request list to the client to be able to receive their process documentation so we can get started and review it. Now this is where I say it's very important to be organized because you just don't know when the client's going to send through all the paperwork and you want to make sure that you're prepared so that you have a good understanding of what the review is asking you to test. Then you're able to confidently carry out your testings. I then take my lunch for about an hour at 12 o'clock. It depends who's in the office at that time I may meet up with work colleagues otherwise I go out and I meet my other friends from other firms that are working at either EY, PwC or Deloitte as well. It's always great to catch up with friends from other organizations to then understand what it is that they do as part of their consulting or their practices at work. Once I'm back from lunch, this is where you'll get started on physically working on setting up your audit plan, sending all that information like I mentioned through to the client, setting up meetings, doing your research, preparing templates and looking at past reviews that have also been done as well, especially if you're new to the field. This is always a great way to get a good understanding of what's to come. Now this planning part of the project usually takes one to two days before you can actually get started with the nitty gritty work. If you're lucky and the client is a fast responder, you could potentially have a meeting that afternoon as well. Now towards the end of the day, it comes time to doing your timesheet. You wanna make sure you record this so that you're not left on Friday afternoon thinking about what you did during the week. So I make it a point to set aside 15 minutes every afternoon to fill in my timesheet for the day. This is so important because it helps with promotions in the future and it also lets your managers know how productive you are or whether you're being underutilized or overutilized. What I like doing at the end of the day as well is to create a to-do list for the next day and set aside a timeline as to how long this takes. So this is something I'd usually do at about 5.15, 5.30 in the afternoon before I do clock off work. And then I would also make sure I send the emails that I've needed to for the day and allocated some tasks for the consultants and graduates as well so that they know exactly what they're doing for the next day. Then I clock off at about 5.30 p.m. and I get home at about 7 p.m. that afternoon. There is no real requirement for me to check my laptop or take my laptop home, but this is just a personal habit of mine. I like to take my work laptop home in case I do decide to work from home the next day or there's something urgent that needs to be done and your manager has advised you that you need to get that done. Now for the next day when you come into the office and the client has accepted all meetings and they've provided you with all the documentation you're good to go to their client office to request a zoom call to go through their processes and understand it inside out. This is where you will try and understand any control failures or control weaknesses or gaps as this will form part of your recommendation recommendations to the client to rectify. This is a very high level process of what a risk consultant actually does, but I do have other videos on my YouTube channel where I talk about this in further detail. I will be sure to link those videos down below, so make sure you check those out and be sure to follow me over on my Instagram and my TikTok accounts. I post on there daily and if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you guys in my next video. Thanks guys!